Hello everybody and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. Today I want to talk to you about A Tale of Winter, which is a limited release edition from Glen Morangy. Now they just released this on November 2nd and I've had it for a couple of weeks at this point and I've put a little bit of a dent in it so I wanted to tell you about it. Now the idea here is Dr. Bill, who is the director of whiskey creation with Glen Morangy, he had this idea he wanted to put cozy in a bottle. So he found himself kind of snowbound back in 2019 in his house, and he had the fire going, he had his sweater on, blankets, all the stuff that you think of when you think of a nice, cozy winter storm outside. And he decided he wanted to put that in a bottle. Now, usually for me, when I think about winter, cold months, whatever, I tend to drink bourbon, and I like to maybe put it in a hot toddy as well if I'm really cold or if I just want to be cozy, right? So the idea of doing a scotch to get that same idea was intriguing to me. And so I went and picked this up. But let's uh, talk real quick about some metrics with this thing. This is 46% ABV. So that's a good ABV to be bottling a whiskey at. I, I usually approve of that. It's not 40. So although this is a limited edition, it doesn't feel like a money grab. So this is 13 year old Glen Morangy, the typical Glen Morangy that you have, except it's now been finished in Marsala casks from Sicily. So this is something interesting and you don't see a whole lot. I think I can only think of a couple of whiskeys off the top of my head that have any influence from Marsala. And Marsala isn't something that I have very often. I only have Marsala in my house for cooking, <laughs> and I'm sure that is not something that I would necessarily want to drink straight. I know you shouldn't cook with anything that you wouldn't drink, but you know, I do. <laughs> anyway, so as expected, Glen Morangy kind of put a lot of time and effort into the packaging here. So something I'll do kind of a close up here. Um, there's a weird texture on here that makes it look like a sweater. And I think that's just a really brilliant concept. If you remember back to A Tale of Cake, this stands out on a shelf, right? You see this, it's psychedelic, it's crazy. And you're like, I need that. So I kind of had the same reaction to this. I didn't even know it was coming out and I spotted it on the shelf. And so I picked it up. I actually, you know, kind of touched it. I was like, that's super cool. And then I had to buy it anyway. All right. So that's about it for the metrics behind this thing. Um, like I said, 13 years old, 46%, um, non-chill filtered, natural color, all that stuff. So let's go ahead and pour and do a little nosing and tasting. Now, as I mentioned, I don't have a ton of experience with Marsala. So unlike something like even sherry, I've, I've had more sherry than I ever have Marsala. So I might be a little off on the nosing here, but if you've ever had this, I'd be interested to get your notes as well in the, in the comments. So let's go ahead and give this a nose. Now, it seems like maybe I don't need that much experience <laughs> with with the uh, Marsala wines because the nose on this is actually pretty, pretty obvious to me. There's some interesting no uh, notes in here as well. Mostly it's going to be fruit. You know, you're, you're getting a ton of fruit and just think like a red wine. If you're smelling even like a like a sweeter Cab Sav or something like that. Um, sherry kind of has some of the same similar notes here, but it's mostly just fruit. So first off, orange is very heavy on orange. Um, that's good. It's kind of light. It gets you ready. But one of the more interesting ones I, I'm kind of getting is I was thinking about it for a minute. So strawberries came to mind, but I'm like, it's not like fresh strawberries. It's more like slightly old strawberries, like over ripened strawberries in that there's a bit of a sharpness to it and something that's almost a little bit more grassy than than just a straight strawberry. But that's definitely in here. Dried cranberries, I'd say. Um, I was first. I was thinking like cranberry nut bread, and and maybe, but I that is actually that's if that's what it smells like. That is a, a perfect cozy food, at least to me. Um, but I like the idea of dried cranberries a little bit more because it's it's almost more sugary smelling. Um, let's see what else. There's kind of a sharpness here that I would attribute to ginger or something along those lines, something that tastes very similar to ginger. And it's giving, it's almost like a, actually, I'll just leave it at that. It's not pickled ginger though. It's more like fresh ginger. So then there's this lower kind of like underlying tone, underlying tone of honey and maybe a little bit of like cocoa. And then I think I might be crazy here, but I feel like I smell a little lavender as well. There's just a lot going on on the nose here. This is actually very interesting. 
Now, obviously, I've smelled most of this before, but there is a couple of things I just got for the first time today, including that lavender. So interesting. This has only been here for a couple of weeks, so it's not really opening up or anything like that. It's just different this time. All right, let's go ahead and have a taste. Cheers. Hmm. Now, the taste, on the other hand, is considerably different than the nose. Almost no hint of fruitiness on the palate to me. It's mostly spices. Think of things like cinnamon is very heavy here. We've got um, cloves for sure. It's peppery. Um, let's try a little bit more. Mm. It's more like the taste is just heavier. And, and I think that's interesting because it's very much a dichotomy with the, the nose and the taste just very, very different from each other. And I don't always love that. It's something that I, I would almost say is a personal flaw as a taster um, for myself is that when I smell something and it doesn't taste like that, it's usually off putting to me. It doesn't mean the, the whiskey is bad. It's just something I don't love. But I will say that I, th I don't remember if I said this. There's like a bit of a chocolate note like cocoa powder, um, which I do believe is actually even on the box. And that makes sense, obviously cozy as well, but that that's in there. The taste itself is just very different than the nose. Uh, and almost, I'm almost sad because like now that, now that I've had a taste of it, it's not as much on the nose with all those fruity fun, fun flavors. So it's like, I can't even smell it again to get all of that enjoyment. So that that's not great for me. Um, so I guess let's go overall here. So I am generally a very big fan of Glen Morangy. I makes my like top beginner lists all the time for the, the 10 year old, uh, the, the tale of cake that I did a little while back. I even made a pineapple upside down cake to kind of go along with the video. Um, I was very much looking forward to this. It's not bad. I, I do want to just put that out there because it's definitely the way this is sounding. It's more like this isn't, I don't think he nailed it to me personally. Or at least maybe these are not the things that I think of when I'm trying to be warm and toasty and, and comfortable. I th I think if it could have maybe leaned a little harder into the chocolate notes that you get from something like the Glen Morangy Signet, that would have been awesome. Actually, just thinking about it, that whiskey might be something I would consider a bit more cozy. The Marsala is a fun idea because it's not readily available and you really don't get any other whiskeys with Marsala at least not commonly, you have to seek them out. So this is a cool experience for me and it's something new, so that's cool. But is this something that at $99, I would recommend that you pick up? Unless you want it for the limited edition factor, I would say no. I don't think this is worth $100, whereas I've been raving about the tail of cake for a while. I don't think I'm really gonna be encouraging people to pick this one up. And that's sad, but you know what? This is only really the second one that they're doing in this kind of a limited edition series of a tale of something. And I'm looking forward to the next one. I will be buying it off the shelf the minute that I see it. And so they haven't lost faith with me at all. Um, this just is kind of, it missed the mark. And when you have this kind of marketing around it, it if it doesn't do what you're kind of putting it out there to do, then it, it misses the mark. Whether it's a good whiskey or not, it would almost be better without the story. But anyway, Although it's it's the most important thing is what's in the glass, right? Forget about marketing. I tell you guys all the time, marketing can can really be contrived and, and make things worse or, or, you know, make you buy things that you don't necessarily want. So if I think of this as just the whiskey, I think the experience of the nose is fantastic. The taste is, eh, it's okay. Um, and for $100, I don't think this is a $100 whiskey. I think you're paying a bit for that limited edition. So for me personally, I would get the, give this probably an ignore it. Um, maybe a try it if it's something that you're into. But it would get my ignore it, which makes me very sad. <laughs> but oh well. Um, this is why I buy them, so you don't necessarily have to. All right. 
Well, thank you everybody for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary. This is the last video I'll do this year, um, but next week I'm going to have all of my top whiskeys of 2021 videos come out, which is always really fun to film and just to recollect back on all of the whiskeys that I had this year. So definitely tune in for all of those. Um, there'll probably be three of them. And that does it for this episode of the Whiskey Dictionary. I hope you have a great uh, New Year's. Tonight is New Year's Eve. So have a happy, healthy, and safe time. You know, get hammered but do it at your own place, <laughs> or at least don't drive. All right, have a great rest of your day, and cheers to 2022.